Hi there strikers. There's something uniquely disturbing about people vanishing into thin air. Read about these incredibly strange, unsolved case although these disappearances span centuries, locations, age ranges, and circumstances, there's one common thread shared between them, a lack of closure. There are theories, speculations, and investigations, but never a decisive answer. On our incoming, episode I'm going to feature some of the cases of mysterious disappearances of some missing that just disappear without any trace. Remember Megumi Yokota? The girl North Korea snatched in 1977 for Americans, the face of North Korea's human rights depredations is Otto Warmbier, the University of Virginia student who died three years ago at the hands of the Kim family regime. Otto, 22, succumbed to injuries inflicted during his detention in Pyongyang on trumped up charges. North Korea sent him home to die. In Japan, North Korea's best known victim is Megumi Yokota, who was 13 when North Korea kidnapped her in 1977 on her way home from school in the western Japanese city of Nagata. She was put to work teaching Japanese to North Korean spies. Megumi Yokota born 5 October 1964, is a Japanese woman who was abducted by a North Korean agent in 1977, when she was a 13-year-old junior high school student. She was, one of at least 17 Japanese citizens kidnapped by North Korea in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The North Korean government has admitted to kidnapping Yokota but has said that she died in captivity. Yokota's parents and others in Japan have publicly expressed the belief that she is still alive in North Korea and have waged a public campaign seeking her return to Japan. Megumi Yokota was abducted on 15 November 1977 at the age of 13 while walking home from school in her seaside village in Nagata Prefecture. It's believed that she was abducted because she happened to witness activities of North Korean agents in Japan and so the agents wanted to silence her. North Korean agents reportedly dragged her into a boat and took her straight to North Korea to a facility, where she was taught the Korean language. She was eventually assigned to a university where North Korean spies were taught foreign languages customs and practices. Here she taught Japanese to spies who were being trained to infiltrate Japan. Also at the earlier facility were two South Korean high school students, aged 18 and 16, who had been abducted from South Korea in August 1977 and in August the next year. Three more 16-year-old South Korean students were abducted and taken to the same facility. These included Kim Young-nam, a, who would reportedly later marry Yokota. After many years of speculation and no new leads, in January 1997, information about Megumi's abduction was disclosed to Yokota's parents by Tatsukichi Hayomoto a secretary to diet member at Sushi Hashimoto, by a phone call. In 2002, North Korea admitted that she and others had been abducted, but claimed that she had committed suicide on March 13, 1994, and returned what it said were her cremated remains. Japan stated that a DNA test showed they could not have been her remains although it was later discovered that a junior faculty member with no previous analysis of cremated specimens had tested the remains and may have accidentally contaminated them, and her family does not believe that she would have committed suicide. She is believed to have been abducted by Sin Guang Su. In the North in 1986, Yokota married a South Korean national, Kim Young-nam 
Korean, comma Hanja, comma likely also abducted, and the couple had a daughter in 1987, Kim Ha-jeong, comma whose real name was later revealed to be Kim Un jeong Dot in June 2006, Kim Young Nam, who has since remarried, was allowed to have his family from the South visit him and during the reunion he confirmed Yokota had committed suicide in 1994 after suffering from mental illness, and had several attempts at suicide before. He also claimed the remains returned in 2004 are genuine. His comments were however widely dismissed as repeating the official, Pyongyang line, with Megumi's father claiming that young Nam was not allowed to speak freely during his interview in Pyongyang, stating that he was likely restricted in terms of what he can say and that it looked as if he were reading a script. In June 2012, Choi Sung Myung, head of a support group for relatives of South Koreans abducted to the North, claimed that he had obtained North Korean government documents which stated that Yokota had died from depression on the 14th of December 2004. However, his claim has been dismissed by many as he refused to release the documents to the public. It is widely believed, especially in Japan, that Yokota is still alive. In November 2011 a South Korean magazine Weekly Chosun, stated that a 2005 directory of Pyongyang residents listed a woman, named Kim Ungong, with the same birth date as Yokota. The directory gave Kim's spouse's name as Kim Yong Nam Japanese government sources verified on 18 November 2011 that they had reviewed the directory but had yet to draw a conclusion on the identity of the woman listed. Sources later indicated that Kim Ungong was actually Yokota's 24-year-old daughter. In 2012, it was reported that North Korean authorities were keeping Kim under strict surveillance. In August 2012, Choi Sung Myung stated that sources in North Korea had told him that Kim Un Gong had been placed under the supervision of Kim Jong Un's sister, Kim Yo Jong, and that the North Korean government may be planning on using Yokota's daughter as a card in future negotiations with Japan. Reportedly, in 2010 the North Korean government offered to allow Yokota's parents to visit Kim Mun in a country other than Japan but the Japanese government and Yokota's parents were wary about the offer, suspecting it as a ploy by the North Korean government to seek an advantage in ongoing diplomatic negotiations. In March 2014, the parents of Megumi Yokota met their granddaughter Kim Mun for the first time in Mongolia, along with her own baby daughter, whose father was not identified. Yokota was alleged to have died at the age of 29. However, the death certificate provided in support of this assertion appears to have been falsified and DNA tests on the remains said to be hers were not a positive match. An interview in the 3rd of February 2005 issue of Nature revealed that the DNA analysis on Megumi's remains had been performed by a member of the medical department of Tokyo University, Yoshi Tomio. Yoshi, it later transpired, was a relatively junior faculty member of lecturer status, in a forensic department that had neither a professor nor even an assistant professor. He said that he had no previous experience in the analysis of cremated specimens, described his tests as inconclusive, and, remarked that such samples were very easily contaminated by anyone coming in contact with them, like stiff sponges that can absorb anything the five tiny samples he had been given to work on. The largest of them 1.5 grams, 
had anyway been used up in his laboratory, so independent verification was thereafter impossible. When the Japanese government's chief cabinet secretary, Dorogi Hosoda, referred to this article as inadequate and a misrepresentation of the government commission analysis, Nature responded in an editorial, the 17th of March, saying that Japan is right to doubt North Korea's every statement. But its interpretation of the DNA tests has crossed the boundary of science's freedom from political interference. Nature's interview with the scientist who carried out the tests, raised the possibility that the remains were merely contaminated, making the DNA tests inconclusive. This suggestion is uncomfortable for a Japanese government that wants to have North Korea seen as unambiguously fraudulent. The inescapable fact is that the bones may have been contaminated. It is also entirely possible that North Korea is lying. But the DNA tests that Japan is counting on won't resolve the issue. The problem is not in the science but in the fact that the government is meddling in scientific matters at all. Science runs on the premise that experiments, and all the uncertainty involved in them, should be open for scrutiny. Arguments made by other Japanese scientists that the tests should have been carried out by a larger team are convincing. Why did Japan entrust them to, one scientist working alone, one who no longer seems to be free to talk about them? Japan's policy seems a desperate effort to make up for what has been a diplomatic failure. Part of the burden for Japan's political and diplomatic failure is being shifted to a scientist for doing his job, deriving conclusions from experiments and presenting reasonable doubts about them. But the friction between North Korea and Japan will not be decided by a DNA test. Likewise, the interpretation of DNA test results cannot be decided by the government of either country. Dealing with North Korea is no fun, but it doesn't justify breaking the rules of separation between science and politics. Documentaries made about Megumi and the other kidnapping cases include, Kidnapped, The Japan North Korea Abduction, Cases, 2005, Abduction, The Megumi Yokota Story, 2006, Megumi. 2007, 19, and Megumi, 2008. In October 2006 a special aired on Japan television titled Reunion Megumi Yokota's Wish, Seiyaka Yokota Megumi San no Negai, dot it starred Mayuko Fukudo as a young Yokota, and Nanaka Tase as grown Yokota. Yokota's parents supervised the creation of a serial manga, one titled Megumi, detailing her last days in Japan before her abduction, and another titled Dekan about returned victim Koru Hasuike. The Japanese government produced an anime adaption of the manga. 20, in 2010. The Shinjuku Theatre has performed a stage adaptation of Megumi's life called The Pledge to Megumi, comma the main storyline centers on Megumi Yokota before and during her abduction by North Korea, and with a fictional ending where Megumi is reunited with her parents. On October 10, 2011, Japan Today reported a defector had asserted that Yokota was still alive, but that she was not allowed to leave North Korea because she was in possession of sensitive information. In October 2011, South Korean intelligence agencies reported they believed dozens of South Korean and Japanese abduction victims were moved to Wonhua in South Pyongan province. This group may have included Yokota, Yakota Gucci, and Dadaki Hara. On September 19, 2017, President of the United States Donald Trump, 
in a speech to the United Nations General Assembly, included Yokota in a series of accusations against the North Korean government, saying, we know it kidnapped a sweet 13-year-old Japanese girl from a beach in her own country to enslave her as a language tutor for North Korea's spies. Yokota's mother Seiki said, I was really surprised, but it was great, and I am thankful to Trump for bringing up the issue and putting it into words in front of those representatives from around the world. Every word on the issue is a chance. I believe, Trump's words, had a profound significance to the issue. It was reported that President Trump sent a letter expressing his condolences to Seiki over the death of her husband Shijiru Yokota, who died on June 5, 2020, 